The state of Maine is rich in natural resources. Over the past century and a half, the climate has warmed, and in response, Maine's forests, ecosystems, and communities have begun to adapt. But as human population grows and the needs of society have become more complex, it is increasingly important for community leaders and resource stakeholders to plan for the future and have access to historical climate data and model predictions. Through our Climate Adaptation Sustainability Initiative, or CLASS, the Climate Change Institute and the University of Maine aim to assist community adaptation planning by providing information and software tools. Hi, I'm Sean Burkle, Research Assistant Professor with the University of Maine. Over the next few minutes, I'll show you how to create community plans using our climate adaptation and sustainability software. Sit back and enjoy the tutorial. We've developed three online utilities, 10 Green, Climate Reanalyzer, and Climate Layers. Ten Green provides access to public air quality data for U.S. cities and ranks the environmental health of a given place from 1 to 10 based on EPA measured pollution metrics. You can find the Ten Green score for a town or city by entering a place name into the search field at left. How does your community score? Let's use Orno, Maine as an example. On the left panel, you can see that Orno scores a 6. This value is calculated from the nearest monitoring station within the 100 mile radius of the town. You can see on this page a list of 10 EPA measured pollutants, including carbon monoxide, large and small particulates, ground level ozone, nitrogen dioxide, and others. Pollutant measures in compliance with the EPA health standards are shown in green. Measures in non-compliance are shown in red, and measures for which there are no data are shown in gray. Orno receives a 10 green score of 6 because 6 out of 10 pollutant measures are in compliance with health standards. Click on a measure to see the pollutant description, scoring details, and health implications. In this example, I'm choosing nitrogen dioxide. Click See Map in order to view monitoring stations. Green dots indicate compliance, red dots indicate non-compliance. Click a monitoring station to see pollutant sampling details. Now let's get back to Orno's overall 10 green score. On the left panel, click Score Over Time to view plots of healthy, unhealthy, and missing measures, shown in this case since 1980. We can see that pollutant measures with no data have decreased, unhealthy measures have stayed roughly the same, and healthy measures have increased. This is positive. I encourage you to explore 10 Green and to see how your community scores. Now we'll move on to Climate Reanalyzer. Reanalyzer is a program that provides access to models, historical station data, and weather forecast graphs and animations. The website has several sections, all of which are listed here on the front page, and also on the pull-down menu at the top of content pages. Perhaps the most visited page on Climate Reanalyzer is today's weather. Here you can find the current global weather forecast for several metrics. The first image that you see is for the temperature departure from average relative to the 1979 to 2000 climate baseline. You can see at a glance areas that are warmer than average versus areas that are cooler than average based on whether or not the colors are reddish or bluish. You can cycle through these images and see different parts of the globe. Then if we scroll down, we can also see a breakdown of the temperature departure values or anomaly values for different regions. The world, northern hemisphere, arctic, tropics, southern hemisphere, and antarctic. Other metrics that we can look at include sea surface temperature, precipitation, precipitable water, which is a measure of humidity in the atmosphere, or moisture content, surface wind, jet stream, cloud cover, and snow and sea ice. Climate Reanalyzer also has weather forecast maps and animations. On some devices, images on this page may appear too large to fit on the screen. If this is the case, use the zoom feature on your web browser to shrink the viewport. 
Once you're satisfied with the image size, select the forecast domain. You can cycle through several of these. Select the variable that you would like to view. And then hover the cursor over the forecast hour. Some of these forecasts are seven day with three hour time steps. Other forecasts are two day with one hour time steps. In any case, you may animate these by using the playback controls. Here now I'm pressing play. Changing the animation speed. Be mindful that on low bandwidth connections it may take some time for images to load. If you're on a high bandwidth connection you should be able to see a nice smooth animation. Here's a 48 hour forecast of the United States. This shows precipitation partition into rain, snow, and there's also cloud cover. There's a lot to see on forecast animations. Look on the right side of the domain. That's Hurricane Gonzalo, a Category 4 storm. There is one more way to check the current weather forecast on Climate Rain Analyzer. It's simple. Enter a place name at the top right, or a domain. Click search weather or press enter. And now you have a five day forecast from the NSEP Global Forecast System model. At the top is temperature and precipitable water, cloud cover, precipitation. At the bottom, wind speed, sea level pressure, and a location map. Now we will return to the site index. So far we've discussed mostly the weather forecasting capabilities of Climate Rain Analyzer, but for adaptation and sustainability plans you'll want to use other aspects of the site. So now we will focus on historical station data, this link here, and climate reanalysis maps and time series. First we'll go to the historical station data. From this link, you come to the interface that provides access to the Global Historical Climatology Network. Here you can search for stations in order to plot temperature precipitation histories for a given site. And this is one aspect of climate reanalyzer that should be particularly useful. I'll search for Portland. And in just a couple seconds, a list of all matches to your search comes up. And depending upon the station you search, you may find the entry you want at the top of the list, or it may be buried down some number of lines. In this case, I know beforehand that I want to see the information from the Portland International Job Port, which is item number 10 here. You can look at the latitude and longitude to make sure it's the station we want, and also the start and end date. This particular record goes from 1940 to 2014, and then here are the variables. It includes temperature, minimum, maximum mean, winds, snow depth, precipitation. Select the item, and now through this interface you can create plots. Over here, select the parameter. In this case we'll go with mean temperature. Year 1 and year 2, that's the range the plot will produce. Click plot. And in a few seconds we'll see the mean temperature for the Portland jet port. Now here's the entire record. And you may want to make your own plot. And if that's the case, scroll down a little bit and click Get Text. And now here's an ASCII text file that is nicely formatted to work with any spreadsheet software. You can download this file, import to your spreadsheet software, and then produce your own plots. There are time units, including year, month, day, 
day number of the year, 1 to 365, and then these columns here, there's one for each variable. Now let's return to the GHCN plotting interface. We just plotted up temperature, and now let's try a couple other plots. This time, precipitation. We'll again plot a time series. Click plot. Of course, it'll take a couple seconds for the image to show up. And now, say we don't want to import the file to a spreadsheet, but we want to create another graphic on Reanalyzer. Say we want to look at particular years in which there may have been um, an event of high precipitation that you're interested in. Here, for example, between 1988 and 1984, there are a number of years in which there were high precipitation events. And we can change the range of time values on the plot from, for example, say 1985 to 1995. Click plot again. And now the image that comes up, we can see a little more detail. And of course, you can keep zooming in on this in this way. We can also plot the mean annual cycle or seasonal cycle by selecting this button here. Now, in this case, I'm going to go back to temperature. This time, we'll take maximum temperature. Now, I should emphasize these are daily average values in the case of precipitation. They're daily total values. Click plot. And once again, a moment later, the image appears. And these are the daily data for the period 1985 to 1995. Now, if we now, if we would like to see the entire record, all we need to do is select 1940, 2014. When I click plot, all of the data for the entire record period will show. Now, let's also see a daily average. I'll click this box to show average, and we could also overlay a particular year. Let's overlay. I'm going to pick a random year here, say 1996. Click plot. And the image that comes up, again, will show all the data. It will also show daily average, which is this light blue line. And the curve in orange is 1996, as we've selected there. Now, you may want to change the y-axis scaling. Select this box for minimum. I'm going to enter negative 20. And this for now is in degrees centigrade, but soon Reanalyzer will have an option to translate to degrees Fahrenheit. For the time being, you can do that in spreadsheet software. Click plot. And now the image that comes up will have a more appropriate scaling, which we can see more of the data in, in greater detail. You may also want to get a PDF. It's a vector-based PDF file that you can easily put into a report or into any software that will modify vector-based files. Now let's return to the Climate Reanalyzer main menu. Now that we've had an overview of how to use the GHCN interface to collect station data home, back at the front page, and I mentioned before that we would also investigate climate reanalysis maps and time series. We'll start with maps, and I'll define climate reanalysis. A climate reanalysis model is very similar to a weather forecast model, except for it's one that has been run back in time with boundary conditions, data supplied from a global array of weather station data, weather balloons, satellites. Those provide information for conditions at the surface and conditions through the atmosphere at any given time. The reanalysis model is run. It's a dynamical model. It computes 
with changes in weather throughout the column of the atmosphere and across the grid. Most reanalyses are global in scale, some are regional. In Climate Reanalyzer, the name is derived from reanalysis. Now in this particular interface, again it's used to make maps. We can make maps of temperature, precipitation, wind, over some range of years and over different domains. I won't show you every data set, I won't show you every option, but I want to give you a sense of what is available. The items on this list are, include reanalysis models, there's also a statistical interpolation model uh, for temperature and precipitation, and towards the bottom of the list there are general circulation models that are their future GCMs that predict temperature and precipitation to the future. We'll look at those in a moment. First let's begin with this very first data set called the Air Interim. That's a reanalysis. It goes from 1979 to 2013. And this will at least give you a flavor of what a reanalysis is. For region, we'll keep world selected, click plot, and in a few moments you'll see a temperature map of the globe from 1979 from this reanalysis model. The values here are in, it's an annual average for 1979. We could also average across a range of years, say for the entire record period from 79 to 2013. We can also produce difference maps. In this case, I'm again going to keep ERA interim selected. We're going to subtract one range of years from another. We'll use 2001 to 2013, and from that we'll subtract 1979 to 2000. This is the climatological period that I use for the daily temperature anomalies on Reanalyzer. We'll keep it on mean temperature for month. We can choose a specific month or a season. This would be December, January, February, winter in the northern hemisphere, spring, summer, fall, and so on. Leave it on annual. We'll change the map projection. Uh, we could also select globe, but in this case we want to keep it on map. Under region, we'll select northeastern US, click plot, and the image that comes up will show you the temperature difference from the early, two, uh, excuse me, from 2001 to 2013 minus 1979 to 2000. This is on an annual average basis. And the temperature here is in degrees. In the future, there'll be an option to convert these to Fahrenheit. As you can see, the reanalysis indicates that the entire region has warmed over that time period, with the exception of a small cold anomaly offshore in the Atlantic. Now is one other example of what we can plot. Precipitation. And this time I'll change the plot type to average. This will be a, a regular plot, not a difference plot. This will show the total annual precipitation on average from 2001 to 2013. And these totals are in meters water equivalents. And now let's produce one more map. In this previous example, we used the reanalysis data set ERA interim. And for the next example, we're going to use something different. We'll select the last item on the list, CCSM4. That's one of the future general circulation models. Select that. We'll change this to temperature, mean temperature. And for projection, let's change it to globe so you can see what, what this image will look like. And for region, say North America. And for the year, first for the year span, we'll say single. And just for fun, let's go up to 2050. Click plot. The image that comes up will, of course, show the temperature predicted for 2050, global projection centered on North America. And now I note that with CCSM4, 
there are a range of years from 1870 up to 2100. There's a historical run, a modern control run, and then of course the, the future run. And I encourage you to take time, play around with the interface if you will, make difference maps, and explore the changing climate on your own. It's really quite fun to do and quite interesting. You can learn a lot from these reanalysis and general circulation models. Now with that, we'll go back to the front page and now we'll click on time series, the reanalysis time series. Through this interface we can make time series plots of the same reanalysis data sets that we saw in the map interface. One thing I'd like to point out before producing a plot is that if you are uncertain which data set to choose, and there are many, and it's a daunting task if you are unfamiliar with reanalysis and GCMs. If you click the info button here, it brings you to the available data sets page. Every data set that is available on Climate Reanalyzer, by data set I include climate models and also weather forecast models. Each of those that's available on the site has a short description here and a link to the original data source. And so if you find yourself using Climate Reanalyzer and wondering which reanalysis to use or which data set, refer to this page and uh, with luck we'll answer some of your questions. Now, we'll go back to the time series interface. We'll leave it on the area interim. This time we'll plot sea level pressure. If something different, we'll plot it for May. And we'll select a region. We will, this time, say North America. So in this case, we'll average across all of North America. Click Plot. And a few moments later, we'll see an image that depicts mean sea level pressure as it varies through time for the month of May for ERA interim reanalysis. And again, several different data sets to choose from, including the future GCM. Now we'll select CCSM4, which we saw in the last map example. We'll click mean temperature. We'll change this back to annual. North America, we'll see the signal of mean annual temperature average across North America for the entire CCSM4 record period, which in this case it's the historical run beginning in 1870 as the, the modern control run in the 2000s and then the 100 year future climate projection. And there we go. Now if you'd like to get a time series in ASCII text format, under downloads click text. And just as you saw through the GHCN station data interface, you can also get a nicely formatted file that you can import to spreadsheet software if you want to produce your own plots. Here, everything is organized by year and then months. And with that, we conclude the tour of Climate Reanalyzer, and now we move on to Climate Layers. Climate Layers is a GIS-style framework for visualizing climate in relation to other environmental parameters. There are many available layers, including temperature, precipitation, land cover, as shown here, population density, conservation areas, and others. There are a number of different things that we can look at here. First, I'd like to point out, as with any good layers program that you find on the web these days, we can zoom in and we can have state borders, county borders, and right now we have land cover, land use map up, showing the different zones, and here's a key over on this side. We remove this layer, we can look at the base map underneath. There's Bangor. We can look at surface landforms. For example, again, here's the key. So 
artificial lithology or the rock type. Percent canopy cover. Wetlands. For this field we have to zoom in pretty far. There we go. And perhaps most importantly, climate layers. We can look at temperature. We'll zoom out here. These temperature maps are for the entire United States, but of course in this presentation we'll focus on Maine. Precipitation. And we can also look at temperature and precipitation for future GCMs. Several other fields that we can look at include population density for 1990, 2000. We can look at main climate zones. Now I'll remove the underlying precipitation fields. Zone 3 is along the coast, the coastal zone. The second zone is the interior of the state, and then the northern and western mountain climate zone or division. Conserved lands. Deer wintering areas, shown orange. And also schools, police stations, fire stations. We hope that this will assist you with your planning if you need a map in which you want to overlay climate fields and then in relation to important public services. There are also uh, hospitals can be plotted, airport runways, railroads. There are many different fields and climate layers, a number of different things to do. And as with the Climate Reanalyzer and 10 Green, I encourage you to explore the software package and to see the many different things that it can do. We'll zoom out and we'll explore the base maps further. Different base maps provided by Esri. And I should note that the data sets included on here are all publicly available and visit the class website to find references to, to each data set. This concludes our tutorial. We hope that you find 10 Green, Climate Reanalyzer, and Climate Layers useful in your adaptation planning.